Welcome back to Art Talk with your artist Kevalon, and you are now inside the Art Attack Studio. Today, this is your first airbrush class. This is your first Art Attack Art Talk airbrush class. So we're going into airbrushing 101, and it's for starving artists and anyone who wants to airbrush, and I mean anyone. So if you can't draw, you can take this class. If you can draw, you can take this class. If you are an enthusiast who maybe was on the boardwalk watching a, some kind of airbrusher paint t-shirts, mostly t-shirts, hats and stuff, they probably were using brushes like these when they were working, okay? Now, if you got excited and went home and bought an airbrush and didn't know how to use it, didn't have any guidance, if you were out this summer and were at the beach and saw someone painting with an airbrush and always wanted to do it, or you got your nails done, you saw some person using an airbrush masterfully, these are the type of brushes you probably saw them with, okay? So we're going to break down airbrushing from A to Z throughout these videos, okay? And I'm going to show you some pros and cons today as far as airbrushes. Now, when I say A to Z, it's going to be a series of videos. So, you're not going to Z with this one video. Now, let's get started. The history of airbrushes goes back, in my opinion, back to the 50s is when they really got popular with all of those cars and the vehicle graphics that people would do were done with airbrushes. Also, the practical use of the airbrush with vehicles was where it started not with art so it started with the factories that made cars that painted cars they would go into the door jams and into the gas cap area where you pull back the gas cap to put your gas in they would go into those areas and paint them first with the airbrush then they would go over the entire car with the big brush but to get into fine areas you have to use something smaller like one of these brushes to get in there and that's how really airbrushing got you know shown to people and used in front of people and you would see people using them in those factories now when people outside the factory wanted work that were artists they would take their airbrushes and do graphics on cars like flames Flames were the easiest way for people to express themselves on their vehicles back then. It was the most popular way. That's why they call it 50s flames. If you see a lot of artists doing flames, they usually refer to the 50s, where flames were very popular on cars. And to this day, you see car shows with people with 50s flames on their cars. They just bring it up to the 2018 level with the sparkles in it and they turn it into tribal designs and things like that so that's a whole nother video but airbrushing started in my humble opinion back then that's when it really got popular and people got exposed and turned out on airbrushing so now let's go into some pros and cons with the airbrushes the way I'm gonna express that is through these two brushes which I purchased recently now there's a company that sells equipment inexpensively and I want you to know that they sell everything but they have a low level purchasing well a kit that you can purchase through them and purchasing it is very easy I think that their customer service is great and the company is called TCP Global TCP Global offers an inexpensive airbrush called Ophir. Ophir is right here, okay? That's the logo, that's the box that it came in. Ophir, okay? Ophir has all types of brushes. They have gravity feed, which has a cup on the top. They have siphon feed, which is my favorite. 
and they also have a siphon feed which has a side I call it a side cup side saddle design where the cup inserts from the side now I'm using these two against each other because one of them is my favorite one to use for the videos when I make these art talk videos okay now the instructional part of this is called art talk because I talk and do art and I speak on things that are interesting and interesting people and people in the news and things like that I speak on current events and things that I think are entertaining or maybe important at the time so I break it down to you the art talk also has a side where we deal with art and art issues and one of the art issues is when you're airbrushing it's very difficult for a lot of people so I'm here to simplify it for you in this class and in this series and it's called the art attack airbrush class and art talk is part of it so we're gonna talk about art today and how to really use these airbrushes now the Ophir series is very inexpensive it came in a kit and if you're a starving artist which most people are on this channel because this channel is for starving artists mostly because I want to show you an inexpensive way to really express yourself and enjoy your hobby or your job because I'm gonna show you how to go on the street with this and actually airbrush live for people and that's the way you make your money is airbrushing live maybe in a mall maybe on a cruise ship maybe on the street somewhere maybe inside a club I only name all these situations because I've been in every situation I've also been on just about every beach or boardwalk on the East Coast mainly and that's from Miami South Beach Myrtle Beach places like that on up to places like Adventure World that used to be in Maryland which is now Six Flags which I've done things for both corporations in the same amusement parks and also I've been in malls all over the place on up to Boston Maine so the top and the bottom I've been all over North America using these brushes right here so people consider me an expert I don't consider myself an expert I just have massive experience airbrushing I've been airbrushing since 1988 it was when I picked up my first airbrush I fell in love with the airbrush in terms of painting since then I've always been using airbrushes and everybody knows it who knows me now let's go into it this brush here this is an Ophir I'm gonna show you what difference this has than these brushes this is actually a gravity feed brush okay gravity feed means that this cup right here on top it has a cap on it okay that cap covers this cup it holds your paint inside the brush so now when you put your paint you take your paint and you put it inside this brush okay you put your cap back on and you spray like this when you press down on this button is dual action dual action means there's two actions one you press down to get the air flowing and you pull back to make the paint from this cup come out the front so when you press down on this the air comes out of the front here okay and the paint but this paint in this cup is gonna come out of the front of the airbrush when you pull back now the further you pull back the larger a line you're gonna get when you're spraying so you wanna go down for air and pull back a little for a fine line okay and you pull all the way back and you're gonna get a large line or a large spray 
and again it comes out the front right here okay now this is called gravity feed because when the paint is in the cup right here it feeds down into the brush with gravity naturally this is gonna sink into the brush the paint falls down into the brush now inside you can see it has a needle sticking into the tip of the brush when you pull back that needle opens the hole inside and you're able to get paint out of this cup and that's basically how the gravity feed works now with gravity feed I think it's difficult because you have to clean this cup say you have one of these alright you have to clean this cup this cup is not easy to clean so if you don't have ten of these brushes or maybe six or seven to represent the colors you need which you might be working on a project that only has a couple of colors okay and you would be fortunate when you're talking about these brushes if you only have a couple of colors because you don't have to clean it alright now that is a gravity feed airbrush and that's how it works basically alright I'm here to simplify these brushes and humanize this whole airbrush process for you so that you can go out with confidence and know what to buy and know what to get and that's my job is to make it easy for you also my job is to continue your art education through direct contact so if you want to make donations later and go further with your teachings if you want to have private tutoring I'm also available for that my email address is kevalone k-e-v-a-l-o-n-e -E, at gmail.com and we can start that process like that and by way of donations is how I do this alright these classes however on YouTube are the only price for this is you subscribe you like and share these videos or just subscribe and like or whatever you want to do just to support the channel I would appreciate if you would subscribe and then you'll hit the bell next to the subscribe subscribe button and then you'll be aware of all my new videos because the instructional part of art talk will also be going down right here on the art talk channel with Kevalon. okay now the second brush I want to introduce to you is a siphon feed brush and I'll explain that to you right now with a brand new neo brush that brush was Ophir. Ophir is a company again by TCP Global they promote Ophir. This is one of their gravity feed brushes. This is siphon feed. This is siphon feed but it feeds from the side. I call it side saddle, side bucket, whatever makes it easier for you to understand because I want you to get to the painting part. I don't want you to do a lot of maintenance on a brush. That's why I'm going to show you the one that works for me. This is what I use in the art talk video it's called a neo okay and it's by Iwata Iwata is the brand I started back with in the 80s and I always stuck with it and that's my favorite brand to use because it's low maintenance and it works for you you don't work for it it's not a struggle okay I'm gonna make it easy for y'all that's what I'm here for siphon feed dual action airbrush okay I just explained that to y'all what a dual action is I took the top off of this so you can see inside alright this is a five year warranty on this brush but I try to get new ones so usually on a boardwalk you would have maybe ten of these so you can move fast you can jump right to yellow right to black whatever color you want and it's truly the color if you have just one color in there the brush comes like this in the box okay you pull it out of the little foam insert and you get a crispy chrome brush right here it comes also with a bottle which is right here also this bottle I put black in it just so you can see with some paint in it alright but this is the bottle that comes with it and the brush 
is inserted here okay now let's break down this brush it also comes with a wrench inside the box okay it's a little baby wrench because it's for the fine airbrush so it's not very big alright but it has a big purpose it fits in fact all of these brushes even these old fear brushes they can be used this wrench on all of these brushes here okay all of these you can use this for now I'm gonna tell you what it's for let's start breaking down this brush on the tip it has two tips you're gonna unscrew the top tip and this is just for cleaning you don't initially do this you just work with the brush at first this is one tip this is a second tip that comes off of here and it easily screws I don't recommend you over tighten anything because you don't need to you just screw things to the point where you want to get it tight you don't want it too tight though that's the tip this is the this is the business end of the airbrush with these tips alright this is a soft metal tip inside if you ever get a clog on your brush you don't want to jam the needle into this tip this tip is soft metal and it will mess up on you now you take the wrench okay and you put it on this tip and you turn it you take this off with this wrench alright sometimes you have a need now turn it to the right I recommend that you turn it to your left like that if you're on the other side it's the right but that's it you want to turn it like that and then you want to unscrew it by hand the rest of the way it's very easy to do it's also very easy to damage this tip this is the tip here it's very 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 tiny in fact right now it's in my fingernail right here I don't know if you can see that but that's it right there oh that was it now this tip goes back in here okay it goes back onto the airbrush then the second one goes on there alright this is the secondary cap and then this one is what they call the crown the second one that's what they call the crown that's the final one that's on top there's a needle tip sticking out here I don't know if you can see that hopefully you guys can but that needle be careful because you don't want to bend that alright you don't want to bend your needle you're gonna need a new needle and we're trying to keep it inexpensive because we are starving artists okay now this tip goes on here and those needles cost a grip you don't want to be buying needles alright so this is the siphon feed airbrush this is fresh out the box this one this piece comes off the back it's a tear away system you can screw out that part and it easily screws back on here onto your tool here which is the airbrush now you wanna unlock it here there's a little screw thing on the back that you has grips on it and this screw you can un you can loosen and tighten with that screw okay it's on the back of the airbrush any of these airbrushes have this those in the back there that you're looking at standing up they're the same way now I'm pulling the needle out of this okay this is the needle I just pulled it out of here alright it slides in and out alright I hope you can see that it slides in and out of this airbrush in the back alright that's when you're cleaning it and you want to clean your needle and everything you can use that method to pull out your needle when you insert it like I said earlier don't bang it up against the tip that's very dangerous for the brush because it's a soft metal tip in the tip and you don't want to have that widen because it eliminates your ability to make fine lines okay 
that is the siphon feed airbrush now siphon feed means that it sucks the paint from the bottle which they provide for you in the box the neo box all right I for the sake of this channel have already put paint in here <laughs> now this actually has black paint because that's what I use for the art talk videos recently so I wanted to show you this pros and cons about this is that bottles come a couple of ways alright I'm gonna show you bottles come with metal tips right and they also come plastic this is my favorite not this one and I'm gonna tell you why you see this tip here this screws in the metal ones as well as plastic ones the siphon feed always goes in like this and you have to wiggle it a little bit so get your wiggle on once you get it in and you use this metal top long enough it's gonna pop off on you like this did You see that now I wasted my money I don't get mad but I will change on you as a company I'll, I'll join somebody else <laughs> now the plastic ones they don't break like that when you use it always be gentle with these when you're inserting it into the airbrush the airbrush will hold it once you have it in securely but don't force it in okay but these don't break so I want you to get the plastic ones for this class alright for this class you want those plastic ones not those metal ones so when you go to TCP Global which is the company I recommend go to them and get that plastic one find it on the list go inside the menus and what have you and find it and don't let them sell you the one with the metal tip because that one always broke on me alright now we're back to this gun now when you talk about these guns and the comparison of how they work for me I like low maintenance and for my students and you better consider yourself a student of mine if you're watching this because I'm going to teach you the right way I'm going to make it easy for you and very affordable all of these guns basically do the same thing however this one the Neo the Neo always works for me and I have very low maintenance and it makes fine lines big lines shadows everything I need out of a gun this one does it this is the Neo Neo is my favorite but I'm gonna tell you something about this starving artist class that we have going on here at Art Talk with Kevalone this is the most affordable gun in the Iwata line Iwata is actually the brand name for this Iwata is the company that makes this alright so I want you to know that if you use an airbrush use Iwata if you're gonna get a airbrush at all I recommend that you get Iwata alright me personally I say it like a fat Japanese man Iwata because I think it's a Japanese name it used to be a Japanese brush I don't know what happened if they sold out later or not but Iwata is my brand okay now it's your brand okay Ophir is affordable it's inside the kit when you want a whole kit with a compressor because you need an air source alright if you don't already have one that's why I recommend TCP Global because they have inexpensive compressors in a kit you get a compressor you can get three brushes at once which is these three that I got and I'm going to explain the other one to you which is the side saddle siphon feed these three brushes came with the compressor which I'm going to do another class about the compressor alright because you need an air source for these but I'm not going to break it down in here because I want to take my time and explain the brush first which is your first tool 
this is the first tool that you're going to use. Now, these brushes in comparison, when you compare these brushes, they're both siphon fed. But one feeds from the bottom. All right, the bottle goes right in here. Okay? On this one, however, the bottle goes in the side. It goes in the side of the bottle, I mean the airbrush, instead of the bottom, like the other brush has at the bottom. This one is from the side. The side bucket style has a cup like this, all right? So when you do it, to get to the paint part, you just stick it in, all right? And it hangs from the side. I find that to be disturbing. <laughs> when I'm painting, I can't have this thing hanging from the side of the airbrush because you'll find once I get you guys in malls and you out in the street and I'm guiding you via email, Skype, telephone because you have 24 hour almost assistance with this when you're part of this class okay when you email me behind the scenes I'll tell you everything how you can donate and all that even though it's clear on here where to donate and where to pay at but either way I'm gonna break it down for you to show you the easy way to do it so all of this that came with the kit I use these brushes as reserve brushes okay any equipment is good equipment when you're airbrushing alright you can use these you can be painting denim jeans and leather jackets and all kind of stuff bowling balls and motorcycles and I'm gonna show you everything on this channel by way of series of videos okay so stay tuned subscribe to this channel and like the videos that you like okay but check them all out for the sake of the channel I need your support go on and check out some of the other videos because you're gonna enjoy it now these bottles the problem with these bottles when we're talking about pros and cons here right the pros I already showed you the bottle it doesn't really break the top alright so use this one this is the plastic one alright has a black top like that alright now you see these holes that insert I use this one to show you I don't want to show you a brand new one because I want to do the cons these holes clog up with paint as you can see it has paint all over the hole you're gonna get that when you insert and remove it from the airbrush alright the way you clean those is you take a needle alright and just go inside and stick it in this right here is a safety pin bent back so that in a L so that I can get inside the reason that this is important a needle is because when you're spraying and this is embarrassing if you're in front of a crowd you're at a birthday party or a kids event and you spraying names on shirts or something what you want to do is puncture this side air hole over here this one will be in the gun this hole here is an air hole alright so let air into this because if you leave that clogged and you detach this from the gun after spraying there's pressure built up because it's siphon feed so being siphon fed is sucking the brush is sucking the paint from right here from underneath is sucking the paint alright so you want to have a way of it breathing you have to have a way for it to breathe and puncturing that hole because the paint clogs the holes that's very important I'm not gonna badger you with that but I think you and badger is another it's not a play on words badger is actually an airbrush line but I'm not gonna badger you because I don't use badger okay but I'm not gonna beat you up about that I just want you to know that that's very important I'm not gonna talk you to death this right here is my favorite that's the Neo I recommend the Neo brush over any brush for my starving artist class because or anybody if you even if you advanced 
this would be a good brush for you too this is beneath no one because it's affordable it's ease of use it's not a lot of maintenance and you will be spraying and spraying your heart out now you need paint in these cans right but also you need a cleaning bottle so take one of those and put some cleaning solution in there that will clean the brush you want to spray it until it sprays clear okay and that's when you know your brush is clean but getting back to that cleaning when you're cleaning brushes this one is the most difficult one to clean because of the cup see there's no cup on the other one you just have the brush assembly to clean on this you have the cup to clean so if you only have one or two of these you're in trouble as far as spraying and time saving you know you can spray and take your time now the way to clean this is to dump it I usually take it to the sink and run water in it to start and then I clear it out and then I start putting some more solution in it and spraying it through it and even water will work as a solution I'm going to tell you what I use but you may or may not want to use that because you may suffice to use water I use water and a little rubbing alcohol mixed in rubbing alcohol is available at the dollar store okay that's why this is a starving artist class because everything I recommend to you is going to be very inexpensive this brush though my favorite one which is the Neo by Iwata that brush is a serious tool to use it's very affordable and I bought this one at a store called Hobby Lobby it may sound corny but that store is serious when you go in it they have every crafting every airbrush type of tool that you need they have the paint and also with the airbrush it's I use acrylics okay I only use acrylics so you won't see an oil painting class on here because I don't do that anymore I try to help people make money with the brush and I'm gonna assist you in going out in front of crowds and painting and painting fast and efficient because airbrush is all about speed speed is what you need so that's why I say use an airbrush like the Neo which actually is a easy brush to use it has no maintenance really and that's what you want to do it's like a car that saves gas and a car that doesn't break down all the time that all you have to do really is gas it up change the oil do the light maintenance on it and take care of it and it will perform for you okay now these guns they spray heavy paints where the, the viscosity is heavy and it's not thin it's very thick paints and then you can thin it out with water and that's the beauty of acrylics acrylics you can thin them out with water and that saves you money actually you know and you can do all types of colors in these cups you could put all kinds of colors in these cups and I recommend having every color your primary colors and acrylics are easy to mix I'll show you which ones I like and what ones I don't use and why I avoid them I'm gonna show you the pros and cons of paint as well it wouldn't be complete if I didn't show you how to work the air source and everything about the brush but basically this is your first class in airbrush and what I want you to go out and get to take this class is the Neo airbrush it runs about eighty dollars on the street if you google it and find it cheaper somewhere bless your heart I go to Hobby Lobby because they have it available and I don't have to wait for it to ship to me but your best deal on brushes and equipment for airbrushing if you're mail ordering which I do often I would recommend TCP Global go to that website peruse get motivation to see what you want to use and what other things you can add to your airbrush kit 
but they have kits that have the whole complete equipment that you need the tools everything they have the the compressor and air brushes in one kit and that's how I got these three brushes right here so these three came with a compressor now the price when I say starving artists what's surprising about the price is that you can get all of that the compressor the airbrush and everything for under two hundred dollars which when I started back in the 80s the the Iwata brush that I was using was the HP BC Iwata which was one of the few available siphon feed brushes and they worked with my bottles and everything that I had so you want to make everything compatible even if you get a brush later that's not Iwata you want it to be like this you want it to be siphon feed dual action go no lower than that in quality and in features because it'll match all of your other equipment and that's what you want to do you want to get things with a standard fitting okay your hose everything you want to have a standard fitting like this right you want it to be like this one okay that's standard size and then you want to have it look like this the insert should look like that the tip of it should look like that so if you match the brush you're all good but I don't think it's gonna be the same fine lines and the ease of use and everything so those are the pros and cons this is the Neo the Neo brush versus the Ophir brush and Ophir, as far as I'm concerned, stands for inferior because it can't mess with the Neo. Okay? So for this class with Kevalon, this Art Attack Art Talk Airbrush class here, I want you to go out and get the Neo. And let's get started with your hobby or your your plan or your art, the way you want to do it. I want you to be able to master it in no time I want you to not be concerned with the quality of your work I want you to actually work I want you to be able to paint with confidence as well as happiness I think painting makes you happy but you can't be happy unless you're actually painting all the time instead of the maintenance now this sample here is a painting I did with the Neo. The Neo was used to do this painting here. And this painting is in black and white, just like I usually do on the Art Talk videos, okay? Now, after I paint this, I do 3D effects on this one. As you know, Tupac wore a bandana. So I put a bandana on Tupac. <laughs> because that's what he did he rocked bandanas all the time so I put this bandana on here but I wanted to show you the quality and the levels you can go to with the Neo the Neo is serious okay the Neo you got shadows everything highlights I'm gonna show you ways to achieve this technique even if you can't draw okay everybody can airbrush and I'm gonna show you guys so again welcome to Art Talk this is your first airbrush class this is Neo versus Ophir okay The Neo versus the Ophir. The Neo is what I use to do this painting. Thank you for your time. And remember, a starving artist has to save money. And the time that you save with maintenance will make you have a more fun time learning. And that's what I want you to do. Have fun painting 
and actually paint instead of all the maintenance and cleaning and all of that. So I'm going to save you the headache and humanize this and make it simpler for you. And each time I'm going to show you a sample. I'll do demo videos later where we'll paint together, okay? And I'm going to show you techniques and you can paint on canvas. You can even go to the dollar store and get those foam boards and practice on those. And they're a dollar each, so you shouldn't go wrong. And the space on the, the size of those boards, you could probably do two faces like this on each board because this is a 16 inch canvas. So it's not very huge. This canvas, this is one of my most popular sizes that I sell to people. And it's awesome because it's not too big and you can travel with it. You know, you can move around with these paintings and not really, you know, weigh yourself down. You can bring 10 of these with you. And this is the bandana I was telling you about. So I'm going to show you all of these 3D techniques that I use. That is actually a rhinestone in his nose. So we're going to have fun here at Art Talk doing all of these paintings but first I have to show you the tools and that's why you needed class number one the airbrush and I think it's important that you know history of things too and not just the airbrush 2018 okay thank you for joining us here at Art Talk and stay tuned for the next installment which will be paint brushes that accompany this because like a cowboy, I have a holster and there's two guns. Peace.